So welcome uh, to On the Frontline. We're visiting one of the most innovative grocery stores in China, potentially in the world. Um, we regularly have grocery tours every Wednesday. So um, if you're interested in grocery tours in the US, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Um, some of you have asked, you know, what do we, you know, what do we do? What does our company do? So here's a quick sort of overview for you. We actually got started um, on January 10th, 2010, when we got a call from the State Department to help them with the Haiti earthquake. We put together uh, programs for the State Department to learn technology. And as a result um, of that program, we got calls from the CEOs of very big companies uh, around the world to put together a similar program for them. So thus we created what's called Sim Tours, which is a way that we curate some of the world's largest conferences um, for retailers and for executives in media and technology. We start, first started working with the National Retail Federation's Big Show in 2015 and 16. And so when we conducted our first program, which is called an Expo Tour, um, we, um, we got feedback from the delegates that they wanted to have what's called a store tour. So we created retail store tours in 2016. And since then, we have conducted about 5,000 tours. The World Retail Federation was something that came out of the uh, COVID-19 crisis. And we'll get into that in just a bit. So the conferences that we, 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 we curate for are the retail conferences in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, in Latin America as well as uh, broadcast conferences in New York, in Amsterdam, and in, in uh, other parts around the world. We curate technologies um, to help um, sort through all of the technologies and the business implications for them. A good example was in 2006, I met with the CMO of Walmart, Stephen Quinn, and I said, Stephen, um, there's something you know, about smartphones that I, I believe is going to revolutionize your industry. So Stephen invited me out to Bentonville in, uh, in March of 2007, and we presented them the, the future of shopping on smartphones. It was a very uh, eye-opening meeting, and uh, well, uh, I guess the rest is history because Walmart and many others are using mobile shopping as a uh, whole revenue stream. But back in 2006, it wasn't obvious. We bring experts to you. A good example is we created the first virtual workflow tour at the IBC conference, which is for broadcasters last week. And we bring together experts. Um, the retail store tour program, uh, we basically have virtual and in-person um, store tours around the world. And we believe that they are incredible, immersive learning and networking opportunities. The retail store tours uh, footprint is 15 cities around the world. And so for in a pandemic, what happens is this particular uh, network of, of people and stores becomes almost like an information or news hub. So we were getting reports all the way back in early January about the pandemic in, in China. And so we recognized that this was a, an inflection point. And our approach was, because this is so unusual, we need to, um, to learn together so that we can recover stronger together. One thing we realized was that with 15 different cities and thousands of stores, we needed a database. So we created the Retail Store Tours database, which, which measures um, stores. We have about 28,000 photos and videos in this database, and everything is ranked by um, some of the factors that we've got coming up. What struck me about the, and these are the eight success factors that drive retail success. And what struck me about the T11 um, food market was that when we analyzed their, their ratings in terms of the seven, seven, eight habits, they came up very, 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 very high. So safety being one, 
the human touch, hiring people based on kindness and evaluating them based on empathy, the ability to create a brand story. Uh, a good example is, you know, Tiffany, when he got started in 1848 with a $1,000 loan from his dad. Um, and, uh, you know, the story of Tiffany and Audrey Hepburn and so forth. The ability to change has been paramount. We've, we've seen countless stories of, uh, of companies that have changed. One good example is the Rainbow Shopping Center in, um, in China. They basically transformed themselves into a digital company in 60 days. Absolutely amazing. There's also a story about Talia, which is a, a German bookstore, 220 year old company that looks 10 years in the future. And as they looked in 10,030, backwards to 2020, they realized that if they didn't take action, all of the independent bookstores in Germany would go out of business. So what they did was they offered the local bookstores to be on their platform. And the only compensation they wanted was nothing. And so, um, so they got all of the bookstores on Germany that, in Germany that would have gone out of business because they were closed. And they are alive today because of the, the efforts of Talia. What Talia also did was they took the idea of the bookstores and they opened their platform, which they created a new platform called Shop the Heim, which means shop at home. And Shop the Heim signed up 10,000 businesses in Germany in four weeks. And I believe it's the second biggest portal in Germany. And this was all in response to COVID-19. The technology that, you'll, that we'll talk about at um, T11 coming up soon with Catherine is just amazing. Um, but technology in general, and a good example is Sephora. Sephora uses in-store technology that marries with personal shopper technology and creates a seamless customer journey between the store and the consumer. For those of us who have been sort of housebound through the pandemic, a store has to have a unique value proposition. And in the case of, um, it needs to get you out of your, uh, your, your house into a store. So having a unique value proposition is critical. As is employee training. Uh, employee training, companies like Sephora and others have extensive training programs that are key to their success. And store design and it is really uh, an important part of the brand extension because store designs that optimize the eight habits and the five senses are, um, are just amazing. A good example of this is in the New York area, on October 1st, there's a, a new shopping experience called American Dream. American Dream has a swimming pool that fits 3,000 people, has 20 water slides. In addition, it has a theme park with 30 rides, it has an indoor ski slope, an aquarium, a Legoland, and 400 stores and, um, and restaurants. So retail as an experience is critical. Each of us has a supercomputer compu mounted on our shoulders. And this supercomputer is taking in data from all the five senses. And what struck me about um, T11 when I first went there was I thought, what is, what's so special about this place? And what I, what I quickly determined was that the, their use of light, and you'll see a video very soon, uh, was really spectacular. In fact, Phillips had done a study that shows the use of light in retail can uh, improve the, the dwell time by 17%. So what we've created is consumer engagement index, which is the seven habits, the eight habits rather, and then the five census married with 20 data points. And so we're able to predict financial performance based on the company's consumer in engagement index rating. So as the pandemic broke, we were doing basically almost daily news reports from around the world. We got that to about once a week and now we're twice a month. And every week we put together the programs that are that we think would be of member good good information and information that you're not probably hearing elsewhere. 
So when I went to the, um, when we measured stores earlier this year, we found that the, that the T11's food market had probably one of the highest consumer engagement indexes we had ever seen. And so Catherine, <laughs> we get to your part. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, and how is the, uh, what time is it in Beijing right now? Um, it's 9 p.m. in the evening, uh, actually, in Beijing. Well, Catherine and Derek, who is the founder, who is on the, on the, uh, on the, on the call, uh, were very kind and spent a lot of time with me during my, um, my trip to, to China. So thank you. Welcome. And Welcome. We're going to give you, the next part of this is going to be very information intensive. So we, we suggest that um, as we show you some of this information, you, you write your questions as you're seeing them. Um, so um, the first thing that struck me about, about Derek was a very successful entrepreneur. He created um, a supermarket those of you in the grocery industry know Seven Fresh, which was acquired by JD.com. And, and Derek, Derek's vision of, of this, which, which I love, um, is he wanted to create a supermarket operating system. And so in order to create a supermarket operating system, you first had to create a supermarket and then look at all the business processes within that supermarket that can be automated and, uh, and managed via software. So in a sense, the T11 uh, is a physical marketplace, but it's also a software suite of products, which we'll get into very, very soon in great detail. So while I like the, the physical structure of the, um, of, the, of the store, what I also really love is the, is the business thinking behind it. So what struck me, this is our visit last year to um, T11, was I, I walk into the, um, the supermarket and all of a sudden I'm in a bar. And it's not just a regular bar, it's a very high-end bar that's it got, you, you can't appreciate, but that's a soundproof room. So you basically can't even, you feel like you're away from the, the market. What I also love was when Derek took me on a tour of the, um, this is the, the spirits department. But to me, I process this as luxury retail. And I also process this as like museum quality retail. So um, even though we've all been into spirit stores, this was an experience that I really had not experienced yet. What I also liked about the store was you can see, and we see this in the US too, but it's a recessed LEDs um, below each of the feature products so that each product looked and stood out in a very clear fashion. Everything was line of sight and everything was um, very easy to navigate. So there's a team. Um, I'm the uh, person, uh, Derek, who's on the call is right by the T. So that's, that's Derek. So I believe that, um, that T11 has taken Omnichannel to a, a new level. And so we'd like to give you a tour of T11.
everyone. Uh, I'm now in our first store, Chaoyang Park store. And today, I'd like to introduce T11 Food Market to you in person. Um, T11 Food Market is a supermarket, mainly providing fresh foods, uh, general merchandise, coffee, Chinese, Western, and Japanese cuisine. And we provide online and offline shopping services to let customers shop at any time at their conveniences. Uh, for now, we have two stores, both in Beijing, and another two new stores are to be opening in this September. Uh, Tilan Food Market is a totally new brand, even in China's retail industry. Uh, but how could we survive and earn customers' trust? Uh, that's because we have three key business cores, uh, like omni-channel sales, uh, retail technology, and smart supply chain. Let me introduce them to you one by one. As the first T11 food market, this store opened in the middle of 2019, providing 7,000 SKUs. The major part wine and spirits is more than 2,000 SKUs. It is serving the customers in three kilometers around the store. We offer customers with extreme good experiences in five senses while shopping in the store. You could get enjoyment in hearing, touching, smelling, visual, and taste. Everything here is alive. If you live no more than three kilometers away from a store and you don't have time to stop by, you could also order online with our app or WeChat for mini program. This is our app. You could find every categories that you are familiar with in the store on our app as well. We will deliver the order to you in 30 to 60 minutes. For now, the number of this store's active customers achieved to 300,000. For customer transaction is 200 RMB. The online and offline sales and customer numbers are still keep growing. The only one in-store whiskey bar is also a surprise in this store. We introduce different whiskeys and cocktails to customers, which to leave a peaceful place for customers to have a rest after a busy working day. In August 28th, 2020, just several weeks ago, T11's first single building store was opened in Beijing. Here we are now. We persistently provide customers with extreme five senses experiences. The soft lighting restores the fresh to the food itself. The ample passengers allow the three shopping carts to pass at the same time. We try to pay attention to every details to make customers feel comfortable while designing. Differ from the modernism design style of our first store, this store is kind of Japanese concise. We also set up all categories in the store, including fresh fruits, vegetables, meat, seafoods, general merchandise, and catering as well. There are three sightseeing elevators in the store to connect the two floors. It's rare in a supermarket, but we did it because customers' experiences is the most important thing for us. Since T11 established, we started to build up a strong R&D team aiming to develop a smart system supporting flexible and fast-growing business model. By now, we set up S11 system version 1 with 18 modules and 114 subsystems, including commodity management, checkout, marketing, daily operation, vendor management, inventory management, financing, etc. At the same time, we build up a store establishment system to support a store's establishment from design to fulfillment. It helped us to shorten the store opening time from six months to four months. We use AIoT technology to raise the digital level of the store and use algorithms to forecast the sales and manage the inventory, as well as find out the operation issues. So now uh, I'm going like to show you how to do this to help you. Uh, if you have the boots on your hands and you find your bucket here, and you will start to see how to do it. You can do it to get a social media. Another one. And you can see the order is on the screen. And you can 
For logistic needs, we brought in a new type of logistic equipment to enable the producing capability of online orders to 2,000 per day. It's twice the ability of manual work. When customers order online, we will get order information on our mobile device. Then our staff will start to pick every order the goods in the store using these bags and put them on the conveyor chain. They will be transited to the packing table. Order goods will be gathered here and packaged and finally delivered by logistics staffs to your house in 30 to 60 minutes. With the support of government and suppliers, we are establishing a food safety traceability platform. With scanning the buckle on the product packing bag, you can see all the information about this yellow crocker from catching to producing to delivery and the certification obtained from government. It's an open platform for both suppliers and customers. At the same time, we are establishing a personal processing center and the logistics center in Beijing. With the support of these centers, we will form a smart supply chain system from earth to sky for fresh fruits and commodities to build an economy-oriented business. With digitization ability, food safety and fresh food standardization can be secured. Direct the supply chain and customers' demands could be linked efficiently. With the development of T11, our target is to open 100 stores in the first tier cities across the country by 2023 and covering 22 urban agglomerations and 50 core cities in China by 2028. We believe new retail is a good retail and smart retail. We will dedicate ourselves to the upgrade of the whole retail industry. Thank you. Boy, Catherine, you've been very busy. Um, and mm -hmm. what's your next door opening? Um, actually, uh, in this Friday, <laughs> another new store will be open, and, and another one uh, will be open in, by uh, September 30th. That means the end of this month. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who are, who are, who head, whose heads are spinning, and my head was spinning when I looked at that video because there is so much detail and I've been there. Um, I thought that what we would do is we dial it back and we get into the topic of the business model. And um, so the question we have, one of the questions we have um, is what is the business model? And if you could explain to us with this chart, Catherine, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Um... Uh, actually, uh, as you can see in this uh, picture, um, we have uh, three key points in our business. That, that is the, the first one, omni-channel, and the second one is uh, uh, technical, retail technical, uh, technology, sorry. And the third one is supply chain. And uh, for the first one, on, uh, omni-channel, that means we use, uh, we offer customers with online and offline services. So uh, what 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 so what what does that mean? Actually, um, we have physical stores that you could see in that video. We have uh, several stores already in Beijing, and people could uh, could uh, stop by to our uh, store to to buy and see everything in our store. But at the same time, uh, if you are busy today, you could also. Um, buy things with our in our apps or uh, mini program uh, to buy the the exactly the same things that you can see in in our store. So that's why we we say we offer online and offline services at the same time to our customers. That's omnichannel, and at the same time we. Uh, we uh, why a startup company could do a, a retail a store. 
compared with the uh, the already uh, a huge one. Uh, actually, we uh, we 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 uh, care about every details about customers' needs. At, at, that's the first thing, and the second thing is we want to use technology, to use systems to help us to know more about customers, about customer needs, about how uh, uh, how we serve customers right now, and how customers fear about our service right now. So, so that's that's the part that we use technology, and technology uh, is a, at this at the first day we uh, established T Eleven Foot Market. We already established a team that is R and D team to support us to support our system uh, development. Actually, uh, this is very important that we 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 see is uh, uh, is very important to our business because our business is growing very fast. And uh, the business model is uh, totally new to our customers. So uh, we want to use a, a, a system to support our, our business to growing faster as, as most. So, so that's why we uh, build a system at, uh, on, our, on our own. And at the same time, we want to build a, a smart system. That's why uh, we, we use the algorithms to uh, to uh, to analyze all those uh, data that we capture from uh, from daily operation from customers and uh, uh, everything from online offline to and uh, to analyze why and how we could do this business uh, good and what was the problem is and how we could uh, solve it at the same time so so that's why uh, we call it smart retail. And we use technology to, to do that. And the third one, the supply chain. Mm, supply chain is very important for a retail in a, uh, for a retail company. So, uh, at, although we are a separate company, but uh, we, uh, we we could see lots of uh, suppliers would like to uh, to to go further with us because we 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 would like to um, we we insist to uh, provide our customers with a high quality products and uh, that is a long-term business so that's why our, our partners want would like to go go further with us so we are establishing our own supply chain a step by step so so that's the three uh, core business part in t11 for market that's yeah for those of you who um, haven't will, will be going to t11 um, I think what you'll you'll say is that you have a, a, a supermarket, um, you have a, a, a liquor section, you have a bakery section where they worked very, very hard to produce the right type of croissant. Um, you have a several different restaurants within the store. Um, right. so it's really quite, uh, quite an experience. And um, so we've talked about Omni Channel. Then I, I love the fact that, you know, that you've got um, a, a retail system that that follows the customer journey. That this system is developed in 2020 for consumers in 2020, which are very different from consumers in 2015. So, I wonder if you might tell us a little bit more about this chart, the modules, the subsystems, and and what you're trying to accomplish here. Um, actually, uh, our system, uh, that's the version one. We have a uh, 18 modules and, uh, 140 subsystems at the, at the first step. But uh, for now, we've already, uh, uh growing, uh, fast growing <laughs> this system to, uh, match with our fast growing business. So, uh, uh, for now, uh, we, we also, uh, develop our systems and also hardware that we used in our source to uh, support uh, customers' experiences. Uh, and uh, for system part, we have a, a, a frontline uh, systems like apps and um, WeChat mini programs to support the shopping uh, in, in customer side. And we, we also have our operation systems, which uh, support our daily operations and uh, operated by our uh, employees in store and also uh, back back house people. 
So uh, we, and, and also we, we offer uh, systems for our vendors to, to use this system to, uh, to connect uh, uh, efficiently with us. So, so that's the, uh, core, the core things that we, uh, we established in this system. And we also have in-store technologies in our, it to, support, uh, to support our daily operation and to support uh, customers' shopping experiences in the store. That's why we use uh, logistic equipments and uh, something like uh, AGVs in, in our um, producing center and also automatic storage uh, systems and uh, or some um, hardware uh, compared with the systems to use to help us to raise the efficiency of uh, uh, picking uh, and, uh, uh, and and producing uh, jobs. That that's that, that's all the things that we use in uh, what we call it retail technologies that we use in T11 for market. It's just it's just amazing. Having uh, been at companies, I was at Discovery Channel, and we had, when I joined in 92, we had about 100,000 units of time we could sell. We had to get to about 5 million to, to make a, a $60 billion company. So the, the role of software is just critical. Um, I was really fascinated in the one part that we talked about the croaker, mm -hmm. and we talked about right. the, the fish and the, and the smart supply chain. Could you get into it? Because I, I, I haven't seen this done anywhere else in the world. So I would appreciate that. Um, um, actually, uh, this is a, a just a, a, a new things that we would like to uh, to do in, in a long time way. Actually, uh, we we joined venture with uh, we uh, we we joined the support with uh, with with a government and or of our suppliers to do this. Actually, we build a, a information platform that to uh, to collect all the information about the uh, product from, uh, uh, from its catching to uh, producing and what day and where and how it could it, it produced and uh, delivered and uh, in which channel and, uh, and the, the, uh, finally arrived in where and uh, when it put, it put it on to the shelf. Every information is helping uh, being a uh, re record in that platform and we will open these information to our customers to help our customers know more about this product so that's why so why we uh, would like to do this because we uh, we, we noticed that the uh, uh, food safety issue is very 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 important here in China so uh, we would like to to, uh, to build up a, a, a safety platform for our customers and an open platform for our customers to know more, to know more about T11. Actually, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, T11 for market is insisted to providing high quality products to our customers. So, so that's why we, we, we would like to open every details about the product to our customers. Actually, it's not very common in, in China today. But we would like to do this in a long time way because uh, it's very important for our customers at, and also very important to T11. So uh, we, 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 although it's very, very difficult because to collect all the information is, very, uh, is, is a very tough uh, job for, 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 for us because the, uh, lots of uh, in, information. But we would like to do this. We would like to... Uh, to 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 um to to have support from uh, more and more suppliers, we would like to hire more suppliers to would like to do this to to join us to do this, uh, and uh, to 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 offer a more safety, uh, food food environment for our customers. Yeah, we would like to push this. Yeah, no, it's um it's it's rare to have this, and um so your development. I think you're opening up a store. Did you say Thursday this week or or Friday? So that's your third story. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, the third story, story is, uh, is this Friday will be open. Never, uh, never a dull moment. And what I also like is, you know, there's lots of, um, there's a huge potential. We've seen around the world, the increase of live streaming in the grocery category has grown about 100%. And um, the most significant thing we see in the U.S., Catherine, is that the demographic of 50 plus, which normally takes about between 10 and 20 years to adapt to a new technology, 
they they're the 50 plus demographic is live streaming at the same pace as the as the 20 year olds so um so i think that in, in your in your app you'll have the ability to live stream is that is that correct yes yes we have live stream here uh, we would like uh, we we use our live stream to uh, introduce our wines, our meats, and and every uh, good products that we would like to introduce to our customers. We use uh, live streams on apps. Yeah. So I realize that for those of you who are on the call, um, you're probably absorbing a lot of this information, which is perfectly fine. Um, if you'd like to talk to Catherine direct, you can you can reach Catherine through me, which is Dan at S-I-M-T-O-U-R-S dot co. And, um, you know, we welcome you to, to, um, to explore this more. The purpose of the World Retail Forum is to learn together so we can recover stronger. And certainly um, based on what we're seeing at, at, at T11, uh, we believe that they're on the cutting edge of, of grocery innovation. So we thank you, Catherine and, um, and Derek for joining. And, all the work you did on the video and all our preparation time back and forth. So thank you. And I hope it is a meaningful connection. Um, we do have um, live streaming coming up in two weeks. Uh, Philip Nelson, who is an expert from the working with these fine companies is going to be here in two weeks. And in, um, in basically four weeks, we have the Retail Future Forum where we have uh, Jeff Fromm, who's a Forbes com contributor. He's going to be talking about the purpose advantage. We're going to have Stephanie talking about the consumer sector. Um, Michael talking about economic clusters uh, in the United States focused. And then Ainsley talking about sustainability, reputation, diversity, and inclusion. So Catherine, thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll let you get back to opening up your next, your next uh, supermarket. Um, and again, Thank if, you. if those of you who would like to find out more information, please contact us directly. We understand this has been a lot to absorb within 30, 30 minutes. Thank you very much. We hope to see you on Thank the Thank you, Daniel. Next Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Derek. Thank you very much. Have a very good day. Good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.